Welcome on Jamaica. Welcome back to News to Me. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this has been one of the most chaotic weeks of 2020. We're in a global pandemic, half a million dead. Innocent black men and women are still being slaughtered by police. I may live this America unravel to backside. Donald Trump a behave like the boyfriend with treat prior for four years straight. Breed him outside, girl, and Torona act surprised you left him. But it's about time the facade of America as a model of democracy was removed. Because the truth that has become evident over the past four years is that it's a very unequal society where systemic racism continues to thrive, the rich get richer by taking from the poor and despots gain power against the democratic will of the majority. The fact that Donald Trump was even a contender in this presidential race and got more than 70 million votes says a lot about Americans and their unending embrace of white supremacy, even if it means losing their health care and social security. Many Jamaicans I follow on social media are obvious Biden-Harris supporters. We openly embrace Kamala's Jamaican heritage and bristle at Trump's crassness. But you know what's true? Most of us are conservatives at the core. We strongly oppose abortion, are deeply homophobic, and use religion to justify the denial of basic human rights and freedoms to certain Jamaicans. Yep, we are very conservative. Jamaicans only identify as liberal so long as it helps our immigration efforts. We don't even believe in separation of church and state. Which brings me to the point of diaspora voting. Can you imagine what would happen if millions of Jamaicans living outside the country were allowed to vote in elections back home? Multiply America's chaos times 10. Diaspora voting would be catastrophic for two reasons. One, the size of our diaspora. The Planning Institute of Jamaica estimates the Jamaican diaspora to be at a minimum 73% of the country's population, numbering between 1.7 and 3 million. Given the historically low voter turnout in general elections, it's not unreasonable to assume that if the majority of the Jamaicans in the diaspora take up the opportunity to cast their ballots, their ballots from abroad, Jamaica could end up with a government chosen by people far removed from the realities on the ground and who do not have to live with the ramifications of the choices they made. Secondly, Jamaica is one of those countries that allows citizenship by descent, so meaning someone who wasn't born there but has at least one Jamaican parent can apply for citizenship on that basis. So if citizenship is granted, this person would then have all the rights of a Jamaican citizen, including the right to vote. Of course, one has to be enumerated with a verified Jamaican address, which in our current climate of corruption is a very easy hurdle for those intent on influencing our elections. But let's suppose that we do manage to put adequate systems in place to facilitate some kind of diaspora voting. We would still be looking at days or weeks to get all the votes in from the four corners of the earth where Jamaicans live and count every last ballot. Can you imagine Labour at God in bed with a big, big lead and wake up as a comrade overtake them? The whole Jamaica would have broke out in a war. So the next time when you hear someone says that Jamaicans overseas should have a vote, they can tell them say, everything we're good at far in good I yard. Tell them to save up their money and take a plane, go out there, go vote. We don't need American style democracy. Certainly not after what we witnessed last week. The good old parliamentary system, probably the only good thing the British gave us, is working just fine. One love.